Welcome everybody. This is How to English. Teach and learn with Gavin M. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions stated are personal and references will be given when necessary. I can't believe you've talked me into this, Gav. M, it's quiz time. The thing that you love to do, the thing that you do quite often, which is to throw in a quiz, you've finally managed to get an entire episode about. Makes perfect sense because everybody loves a quiz, M. So why don't we have an entire episode that's a quiz? Yeah, get it out your system. I will. No, you won't. You'll be back in the quiz zone. Mm. Next episode, there'll be a quiz. There's a quiz every time. Anyway, I think we should ask and answer questions all about languages, English, maybe a bit of grammar, vocabulary, and possibly some pronunciation. Let's just see how it goes, Em. Yes, Gav. We've got a bit of a mixed bag today, I think. You've written questions, I've written questions. We're going to mix them up a bit and... I hope it will be fun. I'm sure it's going to be loads of fun. So, if you're listening, if you're reading, if you're watching Gavin M's episode, episode 16, quiz time, I want you to pause the recording, run and get a pen or pencil and a piece of paper, or maybe you've got your laptop open, your mobile phone open, Em, how many questions are there? No idea. I haven't counted. More than 20. All right. So maybe maybe they need to write from 1 to 30 and then they can write the answers. Are these yes-no questions? They're multiple choice, some of them. Some of them are open questions. So I've written 10 questions. How many have you written? You've written 10? I've written 20. So that's 30. You've done more work than me. So there's 30 questions, everyone. I, this is like, if you're in a classroom, you're setting up a quiz, it is good to give students this kind of information. <laughs> so we have written 30 questions. So followers, write on your paper 1 to 30 down the side or on your laptop. You can probably just do a shortcut where you've got numbers. 1 to 30 anyway, everybody. Ready to go, Gav? I think you should start. You've got more questions than me. Should we take turns? I'll ask a question and then you ask a question. And then I'll run out of questions. Yes, and I'll do the last 10. Right. Good. That's a great plan. Em, shall I try to answer your question? That's the whole point, isn't it? Aren't we, get... we should have discussed this, Gav. Um, I think we should answer each other's questions. And you said it's multiple choice. So you'll Sometimes. give me an A, B, C. Yeah. Answer. Most of my questions are multiple choice. Not all of them. I've thrown in a few there just to keep you on your toes. So how will the follower know if they've got the answer correct? You'll guess and then I'll tell you if you're right. And if you're wrong, I will give you the correct answer. And what if it's an open question? If you get it right, you get it right. And if you don't, it's wrong. So there still is an answer yes. that's correct. Yes. Does that go with yours as well? Is yours following that? theme. Mine's completely multiple choice. It is, right. I'm just keeping it simple, Em. I'm keeping it real. (laughs) Yeah, so go for it, Gav. According to... Are you going to start with just the question? You need to say, okay, question one. Em, I've got a little preamble. Oh, right. Sorry. (laughs) According to Britannica.com, the English language is an Indo-European language in the West Germanic language group. Modern English is widely considered to be the lingua franca of the world and is the standard language in a wide variety of fields, including computer coding, international business and higher education. Mm. I thought that was a nice intro to talking Mm. about languages. Okay. Quiz question number one. M. How many languages are represented... In English, are there A, 150, B, 250, or C, 350? I don't understand the question. What do you mean, represented in English? How many languages are in English? How many other languages are in English? Oh, you mean like English takes from these other languages? Yeah, it's absorbed many different languages. That's the wonder of English is it's got so many other languages in it. Now I understand. So sorry, what were the options? 
Are there A, 150, B, 250, or C, 350? I'm going to go with B, 250. Should we pause so that the followers can also guess? Yes. Should we say, well done, or...? No, I think we don't need to pause. I think if you want to pause, pause, but we don't need to pause. M, the correct answer is... C. 350 languages are represented in English. Blimey. That's a lot. That's a good answer. Blimey. Yes. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Okay. Hmm. Good to know. Number... Can you name all of them? No. Okay. It's your turn. (laughs) Question number two. The longest word in English is... Numino ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Correct. No, this is not. <laughs> this is not the question. Do you want to hear that again? Where are you getting that from, Em? I need to put the source for that. This is wikihow.com. So this is the longest word in English. Just one more time. Numino ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Okay, my question is, what does it mean? A. A volcanic explosion. B. A big drill, or C, a disease of the lungs? I think it's a disease of the lungs, answer C. You are right. Am I really? Which I think is a bit sad that the longest word in English is a disease, because if you ask students, you know, the longest word in their language, you get these fantastic descriptions of farming implements or some kind of process for postal I don't know exactly, but yeah, it is a disease of the lungs. But a fun fact, Gav, that is the longest word in the dictionary, like officially. However. However, the longest unofficial word is, get this, 189,819 letters long and takes three hours to say. What? Yeah, I don't know what that word is because I can't give my time to learning it, but it's Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'll put a link in the show notes so other people can consider spending three hours saying the longest unofficial word in English. That's fascinating. I've got question three for you, Em. Is that one point each? No, I didn't get the first question right. Oh, yeah, you didn't, did you? Is it one point for each one? Are we keeping score? Yeah, one point for each question. Okay. Question three. English comprises 29% Latin... 29% French, 6% Greek, 6% other languages, and 4 proper names. Which leaves only A, 12%, B, 18%, or C, 26% of English words that are actually English. What are proper names? Well, names of places oh, and okay. names of people, I right. guess. I think there was a question in there somewhere, Gav, but can you just simplify that for me? What percentage of English is actually English? Is it A, 12%, B, 18%, or C, 26%? A. Only 12%? Yeah. Um, I'm afraid you are wrong again. I'm really sorry, but it's actually 26% of English is actually from the original English language. Right. I feel like if I'd been better at adding that up, I would have got it right. Yes, if you'd had a calculator ready, you could have got that answer. (laughs) (laughs) Right, so that's another one I got wrong. Good. Okay, Gav. New words in English are constantly being created. There is a new word called nomophobia. That's nomophobia. And how do you spell nomophobia? It's N-O-M-O and then phobia. Okay, nomophobia. Yeah. Okay. What does it mean, Gav? Is it A, fear or worry of small orange and white fish? B, fear or worry at the idea of being without your mobile phone? Or C, fear or worry of not having nice enough photos of food for your Insta, Instagram? I can see that B might be the answer because it's got mo as in mobile, but that might be a trick that's sending me in the wrong direction. So it was about goldfish, Mm -hmm. it was about mobile phones, and it was about photos of food for your Instagram. Mm. I'm just going to go out there for a second. I'm going to say C. 
Should have gone with B, Gav. B was right. No. Nomophobia, like no mobile phone. Oh, I thought it was too obvious. Yeah, you were right the first time. But that is a... Uh, uh, that was an incorrect answer. Well, I hope that the followers, whether they're reading, whether they're listening or watching the show, Em, I hope that they got it right and they've got a little sense of satisfaction and gently pat themselves on the back and say, well done, I know what nomophobia is. And this does connect to you talking about when we were doing the episode about words, you were talking about coinage. This is a new one. Mm. This is a very important feeling of our generation of having no connection to your mobile phone. Yeah, well, that's why I was going to go for no photos of lunch on Instagram. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, well. That's also probably going to be a new word, I'm sure. Already Mm. is a new word. Should we coin that word? Uh, Instafear. Food of forgetful. That's terrible. Okay. I think we'll leave it to the experts. Was that episode 13 you were talking about? Words. It was. Don't forget to check that out if you haven't enjoyed it already. M, question five is a grammar question. You need to complete the sentence using A, B or C. Ready? Ready. You don't like Gav's difficult questions. A, do you? B, don't you? C, haven't you? A, do you? Would you like me to repeat the question? I think I can do it myself. You don't like Gav's difficult questions, do you? A is the correct answer. Congratulations. I hope the followers also got that right. Yay, I got a point. So negative statement ends with a positive question tag. Do you? Thanks, Em. Mm. Number six. Papua New Guinea has the most languages. Correct. Yes. Okay, (laughs) how many is that? And I'm talking about languages, not dialects. Languages, yeah? Papua New Guinea? Papua New Guinea has the most languages of any country in the world. Is it around 50, B, around 350, or C, around 850? Was A, around 50? Yeah. What was B? Around 350, (gasps) or C, around 850. Actual languages. Actual languages. In Papua New Guinea. In Papua New Guinea. And I don't think that's a big place. Nope. I will have to spin around in the circle and I'm going to point at the answer, which is B. B, you think 350. Yeah. That is phenomenal, isn't it? But no, Gav, it is 850. You are not telling languages. me there are 850 languages. I fact pa- check this. I fact Papua check Guinea. this on Wikipedia. Google it. It's a rabbit hole you will enjoy going down. There's a list of all the different languages. It's amazing. That's incredible. I will check that out later. Thanks for that tip, M. I've got another grammar sentence here for you. Can you complete it using A, B, or C? There's A, too less, B, too little, or C, too small money left to buy another milkshake. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat it. There's A, too less, B, too little, or C, too small money left to buy another milkshake. This is B, too little money left. That is correct because... Money is uncountable. And... We just use little. <laughs> and that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a strange one. And I think my students always struggle with money. The instinct is to say that money is those, like those money. Mm, I think I've told this story before, Em, where I was saying to my students, no, money is uncountable. One of the students put up their hand and said, but Gav... One dollar, two dollars, three dollars. And I said, yes, but they're dollars. That's not money. Money is uncountable. And then you get into a whole problem of dollars are not money. What do you mean? That's strange. It's a currency. I know, but you can't say dollars aren't money. Is it your turn now? Yes, it's my turn. Question number eight. Not multiple choice, just an open question. What is the most translated document in the world? The Bible. Well done. Oh, that was easy. Very good. Okay. Now I've got a question for you, Em. Question number nine. It wasn't me who A, drink, B, drank, C, drunk all the soya milk. It wasn't me who A, drink, 
B. Drank or C. Drunk all the soya milk. I'm enjoying this. I'm good at grammar. Um, drank, Gav. B. B is the correct answer. That is another point for M. Good. Question number 10. Is it for me? It's for you. I'm ready. What language is the most spoken? English. No, not in the world, but by native speakers, which means... Chinese. Wait, multiple choice. A, English, B, Chinese, or C, Spanish. Mandarin. Yes, it is Mandarin. Oh, you're very clever. Is that option D? No. So, Chinese, Mandarin Chinese is the correct answer. It is the correct answer. Which is B. <laughs> You're really ahead of me there. So, Thanks, because Emma. there are 1.3 billion people in China, of course, that kind of trumps all other languages because by population, they are the most populous. But... Yeah, you're right. English is the most spoken language in the world. But as for native speakers, Chinese is the more popular, but mostly in China. I see. Thank you for explaining that very interesting factoid. (laughs) Good. Shall I give you question 11, Em? Go for it. It's another grammar question. Are you ready? I'm ready. What does your new lampshade A look B looking or C look like that is c look like c is the correct answer look like is correct what does your new lampshade look like gav it looks like a hat Hmm. like a hat you would wear for a dinner no it's a lampshade Eb. it would be too <laughs> strange and big and <laughs> it's got a bulb hanging in it <laughs> yeah well that would represent your face or your head so I can see it. I can imagine it. Is, it. Can you describe it? It would probably light up a room. <laughs> you would light up a room. It's a bit like a straw hat. Oh. Slash lampshade. Okay. Shall we move on? Yeah, I think you could get away with that on the beach. Good. Question number 12 is about the word alphabet. Alphabet. The company. No. The word alphabet originates from which country? Is it A, Greece, B, Italy, or C, England? The actual word alphabet. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to go for C, England. No, it is Greece. Oh, so I I thought that was the obvious answer again. You should go with obvious because it is often the case. Um, Think about it. Alphabet. Yeah, I know. I know. I I thought they were both Latin or Greek words, but I thought if you put them together... It might be an English word. Right. Well, what does alphabet, what, if you separate them, what do like they... Like A-B, alpha-beta. That's it, alpha-beta. Mm, nice, isn't it? That is very nice, but it's an old word. Yeah, from the Greek, alpha-beta, gamma, blah, 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 blah. Unfortunately, I only know them from COVID. Foxtrot. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> That's different. But yeah, you know, like all the COVID variants were called... Well, that's my knowledge of Greek letters, you know, Omicron and uh, Delta and, yeah. So you know them from the COVID variants, Delta Mm. and Omicron. Yeah, unfortunately, that's my knowledge of Greek letters. Now I've got another question for you. It's question 13. I hope the followers are ready. Here we go. I could A, feel, B, taste. Or C, smell burning when I entered the kitchen. I could A, feel, B, taste, or C, smell burning when I entered the kitchen. That is C, smell burning. You are right. You smell burning. You don't feel it and you don't taste it. Kind of do taste it sometimes. Like when you're out and you go past a barbecue, do you never get that kind of taste of fire? But is that a taste of burning? No. Can't really say. Maybe you can feel the heat. Maybe you can taste some acrid burning meat or something, but... You're right, Gav. You don't actually taste or feel the burning. Yeah, you explained that well. Number 14 is another word origin coming from the French, the word mortgage. We know this word. Because it's not pronounced mortgage. Exactly. It's spelt with a T, but the T is silent. So mortgage comes from French, which makes sense with the pronunciation. 
What does mortgage mean? It sounds like death, doesn't it? Mort, like, isn't that connected with dying? A gauge maybe to measure? That's interesting. The measurement of death. Okay, just let me give you some <laughs> options. So A, money gauge. B, death pledge. Or C, bridge loan. It's got to be a death pledge. B. It's a death pledge. Is it really? God, that sounds much more frightening in French. It does. What would they mean? Like, you are pledging your money or your earnings for your whole life. It's your inheritance that you will therefore give to your descendants. Yeah, maybe. Makes sense. It's, it does sound sinister, though. Mm, it really does. Death pledge. I've got a word for you here, Em. And I want to know about the origins. The word penguin... Is this question 15, Gav? This is 15. The word penguin comes from which language? Would mm -hmm. you like me to give you your three options? Well, let me think first. Penguin. Penguin. I'm wondering if it's some Japanese type. No, I don't know. Option A, Welsh. B, Japanese. C, Swahili. Well... There is Japanese in there, and that was my first instinct. But I'm kind of wondering if it's Welsh. But why would Welsh be the origin of penguin? There's no penguins in Wales. Or were there? Maybe there were penguins hundreds of years ago in Wales. But I'm not. I'm going to go with Japanese B. Incorrect. The answer is Welsh. No. It's from the Welsh. No. <laughs> and that's according to etimonline.com. There is a little bit of argument, M, about the act origin, but it's kind of agreed that it's probably from the Welsh language. So we've already got halfway through our quiz, M. How are we doing? Can you tot up the points? I've got five right so far, and Gav, you have got four right so far. Oh, that's not bad. That's nothing to be embarrassed about. No, no, not at all. I wonder how the followers are doing, M. Followers, how are you doing? How are they doing, M? Hopefully well. I'm sure they're getting some right. This is hard, this next one. This is number 16. Can you think about the shortest grammatically correct sentence in English? Okay, so you've got to tell me what you think. Shortest is... as in how many words or how many letters or... Everything. Shortest in terms of words, letters. Could I demonstrate that sentence for you right now? You can. That's ready? what. That's what I want you Emma, to do. Are you ready? Yeah. A. No, because that's not actually a word. That's it is. It's a with a question mark. Yeah, but it's a it's a vocalization of an emotion. It's like a what's the word? It's not. I was checking to see if you meant a. It's a penguin sound. Or an yeah, elephant. Yeah, it's not grammatically correct. Oh, okay. No, I'll give you a clue. It's an imperative sentence. It's two letters only. And it's an imperative instruction. Do it. You're on the right track, Gav. Four letters. This is two. Two letters. Two letters. Yeah, just two letters is a grammatically correct sentence. And I need to command somebody to do something. Yeah. Do. <laughs> it's not really is there. Is that too short? So I think there's something hanging there. <sighs> it is literally go. <gasps> oh, I love it. That's the shortest sentence in English. Yes. That's grammatically correct. Yes. There's only two letters. That's it. Maybe an exclamation mark at the end might help. That but is beautiful. That is, isn't it? I'm going to remember that. Very efficient. <laughs> it is. I'm going to test my students with that. Teach them a few imperatives like sit down, shut up, be quiet, <laughs> get lost. Uh, okay. Go away. Sounds a bit of an aggressive lesson, but yeah, it's useful. I'm definitely going to do this quiz with my students. Your turn. Right. Number 17. What is the official language of the United States of America? Is it A, Spanish? Is it B, English? Is it C, there isn't one? Mm. My first idea was English, but now I'm wondering if maybe there isn't one. because that... um, You can only have one answer. Will it be A... Spanish, B, English, or C, there isn't one. I'm going to go with C, there isn't one. Well, you would be correct because there isn't an official language of the United States of America. Why not? I don't have those notes, but if you want to Google it or Ecosia it, then take a look. Question number 18. What's the fastest language in terms of speaking speed? Is it A, Japanese, B, Spanish, C, Arabic? 
That is, again, another very interesting question. So you can record speakers of a language and find an average speed in which they communicate a sentence or an idea or concept or something. And you can tell me which language is actually faster than the others. Exactly. And what were the options again? A, Japanese, B, Spanish, C, Arabic. Well, I don't have a lot of experience of Arabic or Japanese, really. I know Spanish speakers do speak quite quickly. Even when my students speak English, they speak quite quickly. I think I'm going to have to guess. And my answer will be, after some brief deliberation, I'm going to say Arabic. Mm, No. No. Is it Spanish? No. Is it... What was that? is it Japanese? It's Japanese. Oh, well did, worked out. Yeah. I did not know that. That is fascinating. Japanese, seven point eight four syllables per second. Now I don't know if it is average or if it's like the fastest record. And we might have to do a little bit more research before we can completely understand the answer to that question. Japanese is the fastest syllabic rate, which is seven point eight four syllables per second but the slowest information rate, which I guess means they speak fast, but take a long time to explain what they mean. That is really interesting. Wow. So I've just Googled that list of fastest languages. And you're right. Japanese is number one. Spanish is number two. French, Italian, English and German. And at the end there is Mandarin. So it's actually the slowest syllable rate at 518 What an interesting experiment, Em. Yeah. Now I've got you a simple question. Question 19, Em. You just need to complete the sentence with the correct words. Are you ready? I'm ready. Gav and Em's roller disco music is A, too louder, B, too loud, or C, too loudly. Um, Gav and M's roller disco music is B, too loud. Correct. Well done. It's too loud. Please turn it down. This is the last question from me. This is question 20. And if you were paying attention before, it actually relates to one of your questions, Gav. So what percentage of English is derived from French? Is it A, 10%, B, 30%, or C, 50%? No, going back to your question, try and remember. Well, according to my source, which was (laughs) commongroundinternational.com, they said that French was 29%. (laughs) (laughs) I may have rounded up. So what were my options again? Let's say A, around 10%, B, around 30%, or C, around 50%. Right, I'm going to go for around 30%, or to be more precise, 29%. All right, you've upgraded my questions. Yes, you are correct. It is B, 30%. A lot of my questions came from speakt.com, language facts. Well, thank you to them. I hope they did their research. I definitely checked a lot of this because some of those answers were... So incredible, it was hard to believe they were true. Mm, It's always best to check your sources. Does that mean I take over now? You do. So I'm going to give you question 21. Please complete the sentence. They went to the tower and A, then, B, fan, C, then, climbed to the top. That is C, they went to the tower and then climbed to the top. Then is the correct answer because it's following a sequence. They did this, then they did this, then they did that, and then they did the other. Question 22. I A made B brought C took the broken mirror back to the shop. (laughs) That is C. I took the broken mirror back to the shop. Oh, you're very good at these grammar questions, Em. Have you ever taken a broken mirror back to a shop before? I don't see how, really. I mean, what what do you say? It was broken when I bought it or it broke and I want you to replace it? Like, how is that? And how do you take it back? Like, in many pieces? <laughs> is Take it in a carrier bag? It would be don't... quite dangerous. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Maybe just take back the frame and say, there was glass in here, but I'm afraid it broke and I want a refund. But you 
I think you broke it, so I don't think you've got the... You haven't got any right to take it back and ask for a refund, in my opinion. Fair enough. Question 22. Three. Question 23. I, A, came, B, go, C, went, back here, late last night. I, A, came, B, go, C, went, back here, late last night. I think it's came. I came back. Was that A? I came back here last late last night. Very good. I came back here late last night. That's a tricky one for students. Mm. Went, I always say, is to go away from your current position. And came is to return or to be at your current position. Yeah, it's hard. Number 24. Can you A, lend... B. Share. C. Borrow me some money until next week. That's A. Can you lend me some money? It is. Can you lend me some money? You can't borrow me. Well, you could maybe borrow me, but you have to return me. (laughs) What? (laughs) No, that's not grammatically correct. No, it's bad. Borrow something from someone. Yeah, and share, maybe you could share some money with me, but that's a bit strange. That's it. Share with someone. Good. It's not just the verb, it's the preposition, isn't it? You've got it. Number 25. I A, lost. I B, missed. I C, lost. The bus by five minutes and had to wait an hour for the next one. Is C, lost or lost? Loss. Loss. Say them again. I A, lost. I B missed. I C loss. L O double S. Got it. The bus by five minutes and had to wait an hour for the next one. Well, it's nothing to do with lose or lost or loss. It's miss. Missed. B. B is the correct answer. Well done. I missed the bus by five minutes. M, have you ever missed the bus by five minutes and had to wait a long time for the next one to come? Many times. Yeah, many, many times. It is strange we use miss, isn't it? Because, you know, I miss my family when I'm away, but I missed my bus. Just sounds like I'm emotionally attached to my bus. Mmm, it does. Didn't catch. Yeah. Didn't catch. But definitely not lose. You don't lose a bus. Unless you drive. Unless you're the driver. Leave it somewhere and then you forgot where you parked it. Or somebody moved it. You lose the bus. Have you ever lost a bus? I can't drive, so no. You don't drive buses? No. (laughs) I've missed many buses. Oh, no. I've got another one for you, Em. Number 26. I took a deep A breeze. B breath. C breathe. And jumped in the pool. That's B. I took a deep breath and jumped in the pool. You are correct. Breath is the noun. Breathe is the verb. That's it. And how do you spell a breath? B-R-E-A-T-H. And how do you spell the verb to breathe? It's the same. B-R-E-A-T-H. But it's got an E on the end. You got it. And I like that rule that you always say about the adding of the letter at the end. So if you add an E at the end, it stretches the vowel sound. Mm. So the noun is breath. The verb is breathe. Adding the E makes that longer. I like it. Number 27. A. At. B. In. C. On the beginning of the week, we had a meeting. At the beginning of the week, we had a meeting. That's right. What was it? A, B or C? A. A. At the beginning of the week. That is often an issue for my students, using the correct preposition. Mine too, Gav. Mine too. Number 28. Can you tell me the A prize? B price c praise of these sunglasses b price can you tell me the price of these sunglasses p r i c e m you are very good at this quiz you know your words good which is very useful because you're an english teacher and you need to get them all right well done i should hope so yeah I've got another one. This is the penultimate question. I can see you're sweating already because you must have a pretty good score here. 
and you don't want to lose your advantage. It could be that, Gav, or it could just be the tea I'm drinking that's quite hot. Well, let's try number 29. Could you get used to A, live, B, lived, C, living in a foreign country? C, could you get used to living in a foreign country? That is right. You add verb ing to the verb that follows get used to something, unless it's a noun. So then you would say, could you get used to the lifestyle in a foreign country or something like that? I would say that if that were the question that I would like answered. And do you think you could, M? Could you get used to living in a foreign country? Yeah, I enjoy getting used to living in different places. What kind of challenges do you think you might have? What would you need to get used to doing? How the transport works, how the shops are, um, lots of things, everyday stuff, I think. Just language, culture, food. That's a lot to get used to doing, Mm -hmm. learning, experiencing, living. Yeah. My final question for you, Em. Question 30. My goldfish is older, A, then, B, than, C, there, your goldfish. A, my goldfish is older than your goldfish. Well done. How do you know how old a goldfish is? I think you count the rings. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's trees is it yeah where, where does a goldfish have rings around the middle okay i don't think they do i think you know how old a goldfish is by how long ago it was you put it in the tank Ah, uh, its life begins from the moment you drop it in the goldfish bowl clearly no its life begins when it's born you don't know really do you i think that's the point it was a nice question You're welcome. It was my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the quiz. I really enjoyed your questions. Some of them were fascinating. Thank you. Especially the questions about the fastest language. All of those syllables just squashed into those sentences by Japanese speakers. And also 850 languages from Papua New Guinea. Well remembered. That is fascinating. And the last one I found really interesting was the shortest sentence, which was GO! So we should go. But before we do, it's time for Teacher Teacher, Teach teach Me, me. where we invite teachers and learners of languages to share their tips and present a mini lesson for us to learn something which we can use in our English next time we're chatting. So this week, M, we have Alexandra and Alexandra will explain the difference between three very similar words that are very useful at the mo. Moment. Moment, yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you to Em and Gav for having me here. We all enjoy summertime, and summer is the best time to travel. When we talk about travel, we can use the nouns trip, journey and travel. But what's the difference between trip, journey and travel? Well, let's take a look. A trip describes the act of moving from point A to point B and returning back to point A. For example, a day trip, a business trip, a road trip. I bought this lovely dress on my trip to Spain. Hey, Alex, you're back from your vacation. How was your trip? We often use the verbs to take and to go on with trip. Once again, to take and to go on. To take a trip, to go on a trip. For example, I took a trip to Canada last year. Let's go on a road trip. That must be exciting. Can't wait. Now let's take a look at journey. Journey is a noun that describes an act of moving from one place to another. For example, 
have a safe journey. Please don't say have a safe travel. Mm -mm, it's wrong. Have a safe journey. In addition, journey describes not only a physical distance, but also a process of learning and self-discovery. For example, life is a journey, not a destination. Well, my friends, to be honest, I have to say that in Canada and in the US, trip is far more commonly used than the journey. And finally, let's take a look at travel. Travel is mostly used as a verb. For example, all my friends like to travel. Please don't use travel as a noun at travel. Well, with one exception, when travel is used as uncountable noun. For example, travel might be dangerous. Air travel might be expensive. World travel expands your perspective. International travel opens up your mind. Very comprehensive, Gav. That may be the best explanation of those three words I've ever heard. I think that was absolutely amazing. So thank you to Alexandra from English for Style. That's number four. You can find Alexandra on Instagram. And I don't think I could have explained those words nearly as well as her. And I can't add anything either. I think she's covered every aspect of all those words. They're very, very difficult. And students often do say, you know, I had a travel yesterday and it just sounds wrong. <laughs> it is wrong. Alex said, don't use travel as a noun. Don't put uh before travel. That's a good way to remember it. So we can use it as an uncountable kind of concept, like travel is my passion, but not with a in front. Except for those collocations and compound nouns where you might have a travel agent. That's a good point, yeah. So that just leaves me to say, Em, thank you for quizzing with me today. Thank you for quiz podding, pod quiz, to invent a whole new word, a pod quiz with Gav and Em. Thanks for quidding with me. Perfect. <laughs> And well done to all the followers. I hope you got as many points as us. Em, how many points did I get in the end? Loads. More than me. Did I? Did no, I do... no, you didn't. I, I got many more. I think you got six, Gav. Six? That's not bad. Out of, was it ten? Yes. Excellent. Well done, me. I'm going to go and celebrate by having a cool glass of water. Good. Random. Okay. Tap water. Great. See you next time, Gav. See you next time, Em. Bye. Bye.